Thanks for inviting me along today for, for such a special occasion um, and to help launch the Think Low Carbon Centre, which I believe has all the right ingredients to become a great resource for professionals and householders alike. Um, not only does this building um, exemplify what can be achieved through the use of new and emerging materials and technologies, but it's seeking to build up a skilled workforce. And for me, this is something that I'm really passionate about. I did my BTEC ONC back when I was 16, turned up at Wearside College, and the facilities there, and won't mind me saying this, were absolutely awful. I mean, we were in this kind of 1960s carbuncle, and to try and do any testing or any understanding about the environment there was just a disaster. And I think anyone from the industry, from the local area and from the college that has this facility should be very proud to be part of it. So whether it be an 18-year-old coming into the construction industry for the first time or a contractor with 20 years' worth of experience looking to remain skilled and competitive in a very, very changing market and ensuring that people have the right skills and knowledge to benefit from the emerging green economy. This is absolutely vital when it comes to employment in an area, particularly when unemployment is rising at the rate that it is, and in areas such as Barnsley that have a proud manufacturing and mining history. Lord Reesdale alluded to the challenge that we face as a country in cutting CO2 emissions and the construction of a new zero carbon buildings that have a key part to play. But if you walk around any village, town or city, you'll see that the real challenge is how we improve existing buildings. And every single program that I've ever made has been about existing buildings. I've never done a Kevin MacLeod and built a new build house. Restoration Man's about recycling the old. The Empty Homes campaign was about recycling the old. Building New Life in the Country was about recycling old buildings in the countryside as well. And when we think that 75% 70, of all the existing buildings that we've got now are still going to be standing in 2050. We've got 25 million existing properties. We've got a fantastic housing stock on the face of it, but when you get under the skin of it, ecologically, it's a mess. So we've got some of the oldest, dampest and coldest buildings in Europe. God, that's depressing. Homes and workplaces that leak out heat are not just bad for the planet, but also bad for the people living in them and working in them. And while we've got 350,000 long-term properties standing empty, which is a scandal, and vulnerable to the elements, more and more people living in poorly insulated buildings are struggling to pay their heating and energy bills, something that Lord Reedstall's just touched on again. The prices are just going to get more and more expensive. So why we can't get those prices down and make our homes more comfortable and get our energy costs down and save the environment at the same time it becomes a win-win-win situation, but from the economics, it's unbelievably difficult to do. So it's a massive undertaking. But I agree completely with Lord Reasonal that with the right skills and commitment, we can definitely meet the challenge head-on. And actually, I think it's going to be our small to medium-sized contractors, those small builders out there that are really going to make a big difference. And that's why a facility like this for retraining people in the current technologies is so important. The Senate's created an excellent space in which to provide the knowledge needed by SMEs to deliver low-carbon, energy-efficient homes. But the Centre, with the help of BRA experts, of which there are a few here today, also plans to develop what I think is a unique innovation park. Unique because alongside houses built to code for sustainable home standards are those built to standards that span around a century of construction. And this is why it taps into everything that I do on Restoration Man. You're taking the old, recycling the old, and dragging it into the 21st century. It means that manufacturers and contractors can install and test the latest low-carbon products and solutions on houses from different era, eras in a, in a single space. I believe that buildings have the ability to transform our everyday lives. And this is real stuff. You know, I do a lot of work for shelter as well and how we refit existing properties. Seeing the way that people's lives change through good homes and good buildings is an absolute inspiration. And it goes without saying that warm, healthy, energy-efficient buildings transform lives for the better. It's this principle that lies at the very heart of the Low Carbon Centre. And I don't mind the fact that it's abbreviated as TLC, because I think a bit of TLC in the architectural <laughs> game and when it comes to homes is no bad thing. And I'm, on a personal level, I'm, I'm kind of thrilled that we've got away from talking about buildings as property and about investments and about commodities. And when we start talking about home and what home means to people, it makes a massive difference to how they perceive the way that they live. <coughs> the centre has the potential to make a hugely positive contribution to improving construction skills, which is no bad thing, and create an energy-efficient 
homes, offices and buildings. And I really look forward to seeing how this building really transforms the industry in this area and hopefully nationwide in years to come. So a huge congratulations to everyone involved in this building, whether it be the architects, the engineers, the BRE, the college, the people who actually put up the funding for the building as well. Congratulations on a fantastic structure. Well done.